Williams. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Coaches, this is uh, Coach Anthony Williams from Connected Athletics. Uh, Connected Athletics is a new Austin-based startup that is creating a platform to help connect athletes with other athletes across the country and help them build their network. We're also trying to help athletes connect with college coaches through the recruiting process and then also help athletes build their brand as they transition from high school to college and then either into the NFL or into the job of their, of their desire going forward. Uh, we are blessed today to have somebody that I really enjoyed watching the past year. He is a class of 21 defensive back out of state champion Westlake High School. Uh, Michael, help me say your last name. I want to make sure I say it right. Say it for me. Taff. Taff, not Taffy. It's Taff. I'm glad you said that. So Michael Taff is joining us today, and we're going we're gonna, to uh, get into learning more about him. But Michael, you know, right now, obviously, we're in this COVID-19 environment. Uh, there's not your normal routine of off-season workouts. Tell us what you're doing to stay in shape. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I actually, um, I have a really good friendship with uh, Ryan Lindley, a receiver. Uh, he's going to play at Yale next year, and um, he has a weight room down in his garage. And so uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we're lifting in there. Um, and then on the field side of it, um, me and him go run routes with uh, Charles Wright, QB from Austin High. Um, he's a real good friend of mine, just a family friend. And um, so I'll be covering Ryan, um, getting getting drills in. And other than that, I, I work with uh, Tex, former Texas uh, DB safety corner and former Bills DB safety corner Aaron Williams. Um, he's helping me just watch film and get footwork. And also um, former Packers cornerback uh, Bernard Blake um, has started some something called band performance and he's helped my hip mobility get better and my footwork get better. So it's it's not been bad at all for me. Okay, great. Well, it sounds like you've got a great plan in place even with this uh, very different environment that we're going through. I wanted to kick off the interview by uh, going through your hu your huddle video and having you kind of commentate on, you made a lot of great plays last year, especially late as you guys made your run to the state championship. Let's watch your video. Just kind of tell the coaches kind of your thinking, your process, your mentality on some of these big plays you're making uh, for Westlake, okay? Awesome, yes, sir. All right, I'm going to share the screen here. All right, can you see that? It has not loaded for me yet. Okay. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a little choppy, but it, it still gives you an idea of the plays you're making. So I'm going to hit play here, and let's just kind of talk through it. Yeah, so here we – we um, they run that formation uh, and all – all year, it was either one play up the gut with their big running back or um, it was a, a deep ball throw. So I knew to lean and look up for the ball and came my way and I had to make a play. I remember that play. Big time quarter blitz, jumping over the blocker and knocking the quarterback down. It was huge. Yes, sir. Yeah. That was one that uh, we all talked about knowing that they didn't have, they didn't check their backside a lot and the running back got it at the very, very end. And I uh, just – first instinct was jump over. Michael, talk to us about, uh, you know, your footwork. One of the big thing for me as I coach linebackers in, in, in secondary is, you know, eyes, hands, hips, and feet. Talk to us about the importance of those things as a DB. Yeah, so um, right there on that first pick against Aikens, that was my first pick varsity. That was a really good deal for me. But we were in cover four. We call it robber. And so I'm supposed to uh, shuffle out of there towards the post, protect the post to one, and lean back on the fade if they snap a fade. Um, so I got a wheel route, and I just need to switch it. Big interception there at the goal line. Yes, sir. Yeah, that was big game changer for us. Um, that that was a big round one win. I, I like that last one. Going back pretty quickly here, but uh, you guys don't play a lot of man. But it was nice to see you, man. Talk to us about your mentality difference in, in playing man at Westlake defense. Yeah, you know our our DC coach Salazar, hell of a coach, and uh, we don't really play a lot of man just because we trust we trust our D line, we trust our linebackers. Um, but. Uh, when I get the opportunity to play, man, I'm always going down and getting in their face. I love um, getting in the wide receiver's face. I don't know what's up. Okay, 
Hey, Michael, we're having some technical difficulties here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. A little bit. I can hear you a tiny bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, you're coming to cough, kind of scratchy. I don't know if it's my signal or yours. I just turned the video off. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, you were talking about just kind of your, your mindset uh, between playing man and playing zone in the Wesley defense. Just repeat that because we had some, you know, we couldn't hear you before. Yeah, so uh, our defense coordinator, um, Coach Tony Salazar, he he believes a lot in, in uh, zone coverage. Cover four is our big um, coverage, and we don't do a lot of man stuff, but when I do get to man, I, I like to get up in the receiver's face and give him a little physicality because receivers don't really like that too much. So as a DB, I love, I love giving them some physicality. Give us a little bit of background. Have you always played corner and defensive back, or did you convert from another position? You know, yeah, freshman. So um, freshman year, I played receiver and corner, and I was more of on the offensive side of the ball. And um, you know, my my coach, Coach Salazar, loves to tell my story because I was a guy that was on JV B team sophomore year, and I, I had a pretty good season, but it was B team, so no one really saw anything about it and they brought me up for varsity period right after our varsity run was over and I just competed I was with guys like Ryan Lindley Jackson Coker two dudes that are one year older than me and um I just kept working and first first pads of spring ball first day we were in pads I had three interceptions at practice and after that I got a shot to be a starter starting corner for our team next year and and it, I never, never let that down. So, okay. well, let's, let's switch gears up a little bit. Uh, let's talk about um, your academics. You got the nice uh, 3.8 GPA. Uh, you're getting some, some looks for some of the Ivy League, some of the top like, academic schools. Talk about you know who you're hearing from, who you want to hear from, and where you are in the recruiting process. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, my first offer was from Columbia about two weeks ago, and me and Coach Fab have a really good connection. Um, I'm really excited about that. Other than we've had a really good good connection, Coach Donovan, um, Princeton with uh, Coach White and the DB coach, Coach Henderson, and um, Colgate. Uh, a bunch of their coaches texted me the other day, and, and I have a buddy that's going up there next year, our safety. So um, that one's definitely a big interest. And then other than that, Furman, um, uh, UPenn, with Coach Becker, um, but really, I think that's about it. Okay. Well, tell us what you think going into your senior season here. What are your strengths? And I say weaknesses, but what what are your strengths, and what do you plan on uh, working on as we get ready for this fall season? Yeah, I think my number one strength is ball sk ball skills and knowledge of assignment. Um, I watch a lot of film during weeks, and sometimes it it hurts me in school, but um, I watch a ton of film, so I think that helps me to my benefit because knowing when the receivers break, know where their eyes are before they break on a comeback, whether they're looking at the 10-yard mark and then breaking back helps me a lot with just easier to break and not reacting right off their, right off their break, just knowing, kind of anticipating. Um, and then also ball skills. I have, a, I have an eager for – getting the ball and I love I love the game of football so um having that ball in my hand feels like nothing better um but what I need to work on is more just my my breaks my 45 degree angle 90 degree angle breaks um because I grew about five six inches this last offseason going into my junior year and so I really haven't controlled my body 100 percent as I would like to I'm just getting my feet under myself and um, so that's one I think I need to work on. Another thing is uh, opening up my hips a little bit. My hips are a little bit tight. So again, those um, flexible and working on those a couple of days of the week will be a good benefit for me. Well, one of the other things I would cause, call a strength in your game is uh, run support. I mean, uh, you, are, you are a corner that is not afraid of contact. And when you do see the run set up and develop, I mean, I, you come up and you, you bring a load. Talk to us about the importance of being strong in the run game as, as well as the pass game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, going back to our defense coordinator, Coach Salazar, he tells our corners that you are not a corner, you are a safety, and we're just 
putting you at corner because we think that's going to help our defense the most. But you're just as big as a tackler as our Mike linebacker. So we value the run game and tackling very, very important at corner. Um, so, yeah, that that's – it's a real – it's a big competition in the safeties room and in the corners room is who, who can hit the hardest that game. Um, so yeah, I, I love the contact and uh, all the other corners in our, in our film room also love contact. Um, so yeah. Okay. Uh, the other thing I noticed is you, you mentioned earlier, you grew like five or six inches in the last 18 months or so. Talk to us about how you're putting in a little, a little more muscle on your frame. I mean, six foot, you got the height, you're at 175, 178. Talk to us about going into the year about how you're going to, you're planning to add muscle and become even more of a physical person. Yes, sir. Yeah. So um, I'm at 178 pounds right now um, and six foot, like you said, and just getting a little bit more muscle will help my game, not only in the run game, but just playing cover two or something like that. Um, just being more physical with the receivers and not being scared because last year, week one, it was like going from JVB to, varsity was a whole different <laughs> level and um going against some really good receivers out of Belton was was a change for me and I was a little bit scared week one but I got I got the hang of it come to week 16 but just knowing that I'm just as big or if not bigger than these guys will help me just my mindset going into the game um other than that I, my coaches really want me to uh, play Uh-oh. Mike, are you still there? Corner, but they, oh. oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, you blacked uh, out a little bit. Okay, so keep going. Yes, sir. I was just saying that my my DB coach lets me know every day that I'm a safety and they're putting me at corner just because it's the right fit for our defense. But at the end of the day, I'm a, I'm a defensive back and I can play safety or corner. Well, obviously, I'm a little biased. But I know you're working out with, with my son, Aaron Williams. You said mentioned former Longhorn, former Buffalo Bill. And the one thing I, I know that Aaron likes to bring is that he considers himself a true DB. You know, there are some guys that consider themselves corners and some safeties, but when you can play all three, talk to us about the difference in playing corner, because Aaron would always say playing corner, you're playing with your back to the game, and that safety, everything's in front of you. Talk about the difference in that eye perspective uh, as you play. Yeah, I know. At safety, you're, you're more coming downhill. You, you see the slant, you're driving, take that dude's head off, but at corner, you got to be more patient. You can't if you don't get a lot of action one game, you can't break your rules to go try to help out on the safety's rules because then you're going to get hit on a 10 yard out and that can turn into a touchdown instead of a PBU. So just kind of staying patient, um, knowing your knowledge of assignment will help you at corner. Okay. Well, t tell me a little bit about how you s differentiate yourself as a DB in the class 21 compared to all the other really good DBs that are in your class. What do you bring? Yeah. Like I was saying, I, I think I bring ball skills and knowledge assignment other than anyone else because I feel like I just – I know wh what they're doing before they're doing it, and I know if they're in twins open gun split, they're going to run a five-yard stop on the backside versus they're going to run an out, a post, a go. Like I know their route concept, and that just comes with a lot of film. And, um, you know, being at Westlake, that it's it's a – competition in the in the uh, school smarts not as not only on the field so just being a competitor in the classroom helps me um, on the field just knowledge you've mentioned coach Salazar a lot uh, let's talk a little more detail about your relationship with your uh, high school coaching staff there at Westlake uh, who else besides coach Salazar has made a big difference and influence in your life as you develop as a football player mm -hmm. my corners coach coach Jason Jones he uh, he was the one that um, would go up to Coach Coach Dodge and Coach Salazar, Coach Dodge, our head coach, and he would just tell them, hey, this guy's legit. We need to bring him up to varsity. I know he was on JVB, but he can play. And he was the, he was the one that gave me a shot, and um, he didn't regret it for sure. Michael, you know, you have an interesting story. Most kids in your place that have offers, you know, they either played varsity as a sophomore or they had a really big junior year. You know, you were on, you're honest. Yeah, I started on JVB. I kept working and then I became a starter and then a defensive MVP and the biggest 6A state champion there is. Talk to us about that transition and what you did to kind of stay patient as you develop. Yeah, I know. Like I was saying, 
week one came to week one I was really nervous and uh I was like the game game moved a lot quicker it was almost like it was a different game um but as I progressed as the season went on I, I learned more things just watching my my peers and watching my upper class senior safeties and senior corners and um it kind of helped me just moving forward and watching film and knowing how important film was when I got to got to the last game there was something in my head that that I haven't really witnessed it was I guess it was just the adrenaline or something but I was I was fired up that game um and uh, I knew I knew when they were running a 10 yard in or a dig or a five yard slant I knew what was coming and like I said I knew on that go route that he was going to throw that up to be a 50 50 ball and at the end of the day it was just me making plays um but everyone that interviewed me after, I always told them that it wasn't it wasn't me. Anyone could anyone on my defense could could have been in the spot where I was because every single one of the pe- players on our defense were just as good. Um, so at the end of the day, I gave the credit to our defense coordinator and our defense as a whole. Okay, you're going to one of the best high schools here in the state of Texas, six A Westlake. You guys are very rapid about academics and football. Uh, tell me what you're looking forward to as you transition to life as a student athlete at the college level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've always loved game of football, like I said, and not only just football, I run track as, as well, and I've been playing baseball all my life, and I had to give that up just for track and football. Um, it didn't really go together as planned, but basketball all my life too, and I just love sports. I love being a competitor, um, so I really want I want to – be in some type of sports world um, going forward for the rest of my life. And so I think I'm going to, I'm planning on studying sports management or sports education or sports uh, science, something like that. Okay. Uh, Give us an idea of what's going to be the criteria that you'll use to make your final decision on where you go to school. Is it going to be culture, scheme, environment, distance from home? What What are you thinking so far? You know, yeah, that, those are all really good questions. I think at the end of the day, it's one going to be how my family likes it and how my family thinks I fit there and two, how I fit there. And if it's the ball that I like playing, because not only is academics really important for me, just growing up with Westlake being a very high academic school. But um, if I don't like the, the culture and if I don't like the football there, then I'm not going to I'm not going to enjoy it just because I went just for the academics. So, I mean, um, like, I, like you were mentioning, Ivy is coming to real reality to me and these places are insane and they're going to be impossible to turn down. Um, but I guess I'm going to just have to go up there, feel, get a feel for it and know which one is a right fit for me. Yeah. I wouldn't be the person I am if I didn't say, and nothing against all the other schools, but, there's nothing like an Ivy League education. I put it up there with Stanford, Northwestern, and Duke. And, you know, I've helped a lot of kids get out and play in the Ivy League. And they all came back to Texas and said, Coach, it was better than I thought. It was competitive. It was a great atmosphere. Uh, it, was, it was very much like what we have, the, the culture of football we have here in Texas. And so, uh, you know, not to put a slant, but uh, there's nothing, there's no setback with Ivy League football. It is competitive uh, academically as it is uh, on the field. So that, that's good to hear. Who is going to help you? Uh, I think I have an idea, but who's going to be helping you make that decision uh, on where you're finally decide to commit to go to school? Yeah, like I said, my family, uh, uh, I love my family. And so they're going to have a very big, uh, very big decision. Um, it's not going to be just my decision. They're going to have a very big um, opinion onto it. Um, other than that, my, my fellow teammates that are going up next year, um, I listened to them all season and Captain Jackson Coker, he's going to play at Columbia. Um, Captain Sage Luther going to play at Colgate, all schools that showed interest in me. Their, uh, their opinions are going to be valued just as well because R- or Jackson gives me details on Columbia that I don't know every single day. He'll send me an article that I, I've never heard about and I'm like, wow. And it pulls me a little bit more. Sage gives me uh, a fact that, Colgate's one of the highest coming out of mid-career, coming out of college uh, to make the most money. Uh, and, I, and that pulls me more towards Colgate as well. Um, so 
just their opinions and knowing that they're my best friends and I stuck with them 16 weeks in the season and um, I won a state championship with them and I got to celebrate that with them. Their opinion is definitely going to be valued as well. Okay. Let's change gears up here. Tell us about uh, Michael away from football, away from working out. What are your interests? What are your hobbies? Are you a hunter man? Are you a hunter? Are you a fisherman? What do you do in your spare time? Mm, yeah, I'm not a big hunter. I actually went up to the ranch this weekend with uh, Charles and one of my good buddies. Um, but yeah, no, I, I've just been growing up playing sports and I, I really, it was school sports, hang out with friends, but I love to go on the lake, love to go swimming um, down in Lake Austin. Um, we have a boat out there. Actually, my family's on the boat right now, but um, I love wake surfing, wakeboarding, all that stuff, um, and just hanging out with my friends, playing pick, pick up basketball, stuff like that. Okay. You mentioned you want to major in some type of either sports marketing, sports management. When football is all over, whenever that is, what kind of career, what do you want to do with football once it's done? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you said, sports management, uh, sports media, something like that, being a analyzer, being an announcer. Um, but if that doesn't work, trying to go into the business world, um, either starting my business or being something with to do with business. Okay. Let's say somebody's going to see you play for the first time this fall, and they might say, man, that kid reminds me of, who do you pattern your game off of either at the college or pro level? You know, I don't get me wrong, nowhere near going to be as good as him, but I really, I really like to style myself off of Deion Sanders with a little bit more physicality to myself. Um, but just I'm, I'm not a guy that takes a lot, everything serious and not head, just no fun, no smile. I'm a guy that screws around and my teammates can vouch for me. I'm not a big listener. Um, they, the coaches got to get their head around me for me to listen, unless it's in the film room, of course, but um, so I just like having fun out there on the field. It brings me a lot of enjoyment. So just fooling around, dancing like Deion Sanders would do, prime time, baby. Um, but, yeah. Okay. Um, adversity is a big part of football, especially as a DB, where you have to have a very short memory. Share with us a time, either personally or involving football, where you had to overcome some type of adversity. Yeah, you know, um, I was in fourth grade summer, and, um, one of my good friends, uh, Sam Ellinger, his little sister is one of my really good friends, and they're, they've been a big family friend of ours. And uh, my dad actually lives in Houston, so whenever he – or he, he works in Houston, he comes back and he's staying with us right now. But whenever he, he was out, Mr. Ellinger, he would always come here and hang out with me and uh, just kind of be the second father figure. And he passed away when I was in fourth grade, and – um, that that was really tough, not not only for the Ellinger family, um, but also for me a little bit, just um, seeing them suffer. Um, and then uh, three months later, I think my my grandmother died, and it was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then um, I think two months later, my uh, grandfather died, her husband, and it was a, it was tough. Not only did I I kind of push away God and. I was asking God why why would He bring this to me, but um, not, it at the end of the day it brought me a lot closer to God, knowing that He has a plan for me, and I just have to put my faith in Him. And um, at the end of the day, He's gonna He's gonna get me to where I go, and whether it's football in my life or not, He's gonna He's gonna take me to it. That is an awesome testimony. I know that's very personal. Thanks for sharing that. It tells a lot about you, uh, and I'm sorry to hear you have your losses back then. Uh, change it up a little bit. Um, simple question that coaches will probably uh, have already asked you, but why do you love football? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, like I said, I grew up in Austin, Texas, and watching the greats, Colt McCoy, Vince Young, um, David Ash even, and um, so I'd see them on TV, and I would see LeBron James on TV, and I would see all these kids on TV, and I would, oh, I want to be like them, and my brothers are playing sports. I want to be like them. They're cool kids, and um, so I'd always be competitive. I put, I started Pop Warner tackle football in the second grade and I was playing with all fourth graders. Um, and I got toughed around. It wasn't, it wasn't the best first year of football for sure. I was getting beat up, but definitely taught me to be tougher. And I, I loved it. I loved it then. So I was like, dang, if I love it when I'm in second grade playing with fourth graders getting beat up, um, I'm going to love it when I'm 
I get my shot to beat up other kids. It's great to hear. Give me a couple of uh, uh, important life skills that football has taught you that you think will make you successful in life. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm more, I would call myself a leader. You know, I, I don't like when everything's going wrong and I can't sit back and just watch everything go to crap. I, I, I'm one that stands up and tells people that we need to fix this or, um, and people, I feel like people definitely follow me and listen to me and, um, like coach, coach Jones, the corners coach, like I mentioned, he, he sat down with me and told me that, um, there was no talk about being a captain, but you're a leader on the team and, um, people are going to listen to you just because of what you did last year and what you did in the state game. So not only do you think, if you don't think that you're a leader, people are going to look up to you. So, uh, the next year's team is, if you don't think it, I know it for sure, but it's going to be in your hands and it's going to be in other people's hands. But, uh, these little kids that are coming up, these sophomores that are coming up in off season, they're going to watch you. And if you slack off one practice, they're going to slack off one practice. So just knowing that you got to be given 110% every single day. Okay. Uh, going back on the, on the personal side, uh, we're with COVID-19, you're staying home and staying safe. Are you a video game guy? Are you, uh, what are your favorite apps? Give us a little bit about you personally and you, and you have some alone time. Yeah, I'm not a big technology guy. Um, I, I, I haven't figured out this Zoom thing too much either. <laughs> um, but yeah, I try to, my friends always call me and tell me get on Fortnite or get on Call of Duty, but um, I just, I don't, I like to watch, I've been watching that um, Jordan documentary a lot every mm-hmm. Sunday. And that's been that's been keeping me busy on Sunday nights. But I've been getting a little bit of video games and nothing, nothing every single day, three hours a day. Um, but other than that, what about apps? Are you a Twitter guy? Instagram? You on TikTok? What are your favorite? Some of your favorite apps? Yeah. So um, Twitter, Twitter's been addicting lately. Just seeing everybody else get offers and whatnot, what their workouts are doing, um, and just seeing coaches post stuff and. It's a little bit addicting, but uh, that and Instagram, just watching the world and keeping up with that social media. And I'm not a big Snapchatter. I don't really get the point of sending a <laughs> selfie to someone and them sending a the selfie back. But um, no, I, I I do it. Okay. Um, finishing up here. Um, tell us, uh, other than your parents, who has been the biggest? Who's had the biggest influence in your life, and who are those people? Mm-hmm. Um, shoot, it would be hard to think from a young standpoint, but um, just as of last year, you know, a big influencer were people on my team, guys like Ryan Lindley, Jackson Coker, Leo Lowen that's going up to Army West Point, um, Sage Luther that's going to play at Colgate. Those were guys that um, not only were my friends, but I would look up to them and they had an amazing work ethic and they would I would say, hey, Jackson Ryan, let's go throw. I want to go guard you. Um, and hey, let's go throw. Or Ryan saying, hey, let's go throw. Um, and so they really pushed me. They kind of brought me under their wing and taught me how they they worked. And so they were really big influencers in, in my, my year moving forward. Okay. You know, your learning style is important, not just for your class, uh, but also for your coaches. Tell us what type of learning style you best are comfortable with. Is it visual? Is it verbal? Or is it physical? Yeah, I like, uh, I'm, I probably learn the best off visual, just seeing someone else do it. And then me kind of repeating that and seeing that. Um, just like press technique is a very good example. Me seeing someone do a perfect press inch out of there put a hand on the hip and roll with it helps me kind of get out of there and um, do the same thing. Another question would be, yes, you're at Westlake, you won a state title here, but why do you think your game translates to the college level? Yeah, I would say just because not, not a lot of people um, understand the importance of the film room and, and the physicality of the game, just being a DB, they think it's, seven on seven just covering guys but um like coach Salazar is nailed in my head physicality is easily the most important at corner whether you think it or not you're safety and you're going to be a tackler for our team 
Um, so I think I'm one of the more physical DBs in the state of Texas and I can run downhill and hit whoever, whoever comes across me. And other than that, just like I've been mentioning, um, the film room, I love the film room and it's something that helps my game out every single week. Okay. Last question. I told you about this earlier. Uh, there's a term in business called the elevator pitch where well, you've got 30 seconds. Let's just say you have 30 seconds in front of a head coach or a position coach who's got uh, an offer, your last, last offer. Tell them in 30 seconds why uh, they should bring uh, Michael Tate to the university. Yeah, I'm, I'm six foot 178 right now and I'm only getting bigger. And um, I'm a guy that is in the film room every single day. And at the state game, I, I watched 15 hours that state week and a film just knowing what I was doing and knowing what they were doing. And um, I'm a physical, physical defensive back, like you, like I've been mentioning. And um, so, yeah, I think not only does that help me in high school, it's going to help me in the college level. And um, yeah, other than that, I'm just a, a guy that loves to work and I love the game of football and that doesn't come with me just being good. That comes with me wanting to work every single day and staying on the grind and, never never wanting to take a day off always wanting to keep keep going whether it's in the gym or on the field I'm I'm always wanting to work great well Michael I'm looking forward to seeing you build on the success you had uh your last year uh, and on the field this this fall if you ever need anything please reach out to me tell your parents I said hello continue to be safe and I'll see you this fall yes sir thank you right. thank you yes sir bye, -bye.